everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today we're going to be unboxing another expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. This came as part of the 1.5 Kickstarter wave number two. This one's called Dung Beetle Knight. This is again designed by Adam Poots and in New York and made in China. It's for mature audiences as it mentions on the side of the box. This is the icon or logo or sticker or what have you for this particular expansion and I cannot wait to check this one out because it has some really, I heard it has some really really cool unique boss mechanics uh, with the, uh, not only the Dung Beetle Knight itself but with the Dung Ball as well I guess. There's some kind of weird, um, I guess the, the Knight is using this Dung Ball to its advantage to try to take down the survivors so I'm just really interested in seeing how that all works out. Uh, it does sound kind of crazy, but that's what this game is all about. So let's crack into the expansion box. I'm not going to talk too much about the box itself because as I've done with the previous ones I've unboxed so far, uh, there's not much to talk about. It's just a cardboard box and you'll likely just be mo moving this into your Kingdom Death uh, base box anyway. So let's just go ahead, cut into, not waste any time whatsoever, and see what's inside this expansion. All right, so first off, just before we actually crack it open for the first time, I'm just gonna kind of center this so you guys can see the box itself, kind of without any wrap on it. I'll also do a quick zoom in on the sticker so you guys can see it um, a little bit better. It is pretty creepy looking, and uh, there you go. And now we'll drop this back out, and let's go right inside the box and find out exactly what's in store. So, as per all of these expansions, if you want to collect uh, packing peanuts, you've got tons of them. So, more of those. And here is the miniature, all bottled up. Let's just dump these out gently. We've got ourselves another stack of some gear cards. We've got ourselves a massive stack. This is what's awesome about this card, uh, card, this game. I want to say card game, but it's not a card game. But there are a ton of cards with it. Um, I, I've said this a ton of times. I love the style of the cards. They just, for whatever reason, when I see them, it makes me happy. <laughs> they just have great art, and I can't I can't, uh, can't deny that. So there's a whole bunch of other stuff here hiding in the back that I'm going to pull out. So we've got the manual. We've got what looks to be a new settlement itself. I could be wrong in what I'm calling that. I will double check that in a second. Let's just take these out of the way for now. And then we'll go through these one at a time. So the first thing let's talk about is the miniature itself. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna take it out of the bag so you guys can see it much better closer up because I think this one has some really cool details. It is. Kind of creepy, for sure, but uh, the, the miniatures in this game, and a lot of you guys might be really, really scared. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people that are really scared of just building miniatures in general. They think of a miniature game as being a ton of work, and to be honest, it is. This game is a lot of work to put stuff together, but there's something to be said for creating the game by hand yourself, seeing the miniatures come alive, you or yourself building them, and then actually playing with them. It's a completely immersive experience rather than opening up a box, say, and just pulling a miniature out of a box and using it. Um, you take it a lot more for granted, in my opinion, when you just pull a miniature out of a box and say it looks cool and move on. Um, I find it much more satisfying, and I learned this the hard way with Shadows of Brimstone because the two core boxes have so many miniatures on sprues, very much like Kingdom Death Monster, although Kingdom Death Monster's quality of miniatures is about two to three to four times higher quality easily than Shadows of Brimstone, but the Shadows of Brimstone has gotten much better as the releases have gone along. But the quality of these miniatures are, um, you know, they're off the charts. Like, I don't know, like, I'm trying to do the best I can here to just give you guys a real nice look at the details on these, but these are tiny. Like, I'm zooming in pretty far. You can see most of these are just the width of my finger, uh, barely. Um, some of them, because they're swords, they're definitely not. But uh, the quality on them is just amazing. And if you wanted to paint these things, like, you're going to have a field day. Um, you know, you're really, you're really going to want to get into it because I can't wait to personally paint this stuff. Uh, so again, I'm not too familiar with exactly what each piece is, except for the fact these are obviously, we got some uh, chest, legs, arms, no, sorry, no arms, those are legs. Uh, we've got, I don't know if that's a back of a head or what. Um, sometimes it is hard to decipher what's going on here. There's a lot of really great resources out there. Vibrant Lantern, I believe, is one of them for building these miniatures. And I think even on um, the Kingdom Death Monster store, uh, they do a really good job of, uh, oh, that's why it's not coming out. It went right through the plastic bag. Um, 
But King Death Monster actually has a decent uh, assembly instructions as well on their site to help you get through it because there really is a lot. So, uh, and there's, you know, other, there's no assembly instructions in the box, I'll tell you that much. They're on the site. So there you go. There's This is the dung bowl I was talking about. It's just this gigantic individual with his mouth open and you kind of connect both sides. Um, and this thing, I, I don't, I still don't know what the, the gameplay mechanics have to do with this, but I'm sure that this thing is rolling at you and causing you just absolute nightmares. Uh, look at that sword. Now that is cool. That's really cool. So again, that's going to be really cool to paint this like it's a, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just love this stuff. I love miniatures, especially ones that you get to build yourself. It just adds a whole other level that uh, I really think just makes you connect with the game that much more. So not going to talk too much more about that though, because that uh, without you guys seeing it fully built, it doesn't really give you too much. So moving forward with the unboxing, we have some cards to go through. So you might as well go through those next. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these off screen because I don't want to risk uh, showing you guys how good I am at removing a finger. And here we go. So we've got, I don't know, each of these expansions come with a decent amount of cards. Like they, somewhere between 30 and 50 gear cards, it seems like. I could be off on that. It might be a little less. It's probably more like 20 to 40. But uh, let's go through them really quickly. I'm not going to sit on them for very, very long, but just so you guys can actually see some of the cards. And typically with these, there's about three per uh, type in most cases. So I don't think I've ever seen it where there's been more than three. So. These are all the different ones. You can briefly see the uh, the uh, stats on them as well as the actual colors. Again, that's really cool. All this stuff just adds to the game. It's adding different things, different things that can be created uh, and things like that. It looks like with this particular expansion actually comes, like I was saying before, with something to allow you to craft. So I think there's a lot of that going on in here. Again, I'm not too familiar with it yet. There's the, some of the swords. So we're going to, exactly as you saw in the miniatures in the box, you're going to see swords that match them. I don't think I saw that one. Or Oh, actually, no, I did. That was the one with the creepy hands. That is really weird. A digging claw. Um, so a couple of those. Hidden Crimson Drool. Trash Crown. Interesting. Okay. So we got some cool gear cards in there for sure. And then we've got this massive pile of cards. So let's go ahead and cut into that next. <clears throat> so let's see here. We may have to do this in two separate piles. Yeah, I think I'll just split this in half because this is a lot to hold on to. So the first pile here um, is going to be a mix of what's considered uh, strange resources with a yellow backing. Uh, then we've got some, what are those, Dung Beetle Knight, so there again, with the actual icon of, on the front of the box, part of the artwork of the card, looks really cool. Uh, these are resource cards, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, these ones are uh, hunt cards for the Dung Beetle Knight when you're hunting for it. The hit location cards, that's what the backs look like. It, it just looks cool. I just, I love it. <laughs> I say that so much, but I really do. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's go through some of these cards. Again, I'm not going to sit on them for too long for fear of spoilers, so if you want to see anything real in-depth, you can pause the screen if you feel like spoiling it for yourself, but I am moving through these at a relatively quick pace so that you're not seeing anything but mainly just the artwork. And uh, so I do not want to spoil anything, even for myself, but I do want to show you kind of what the look and feel of the expansion is, because that's the whole point of an unboxing. Here's some of the resources that can be found when you kill, I'm guessing, when you kill either the Dung Ball or the Dung Beetle Knight. I'm not exactly sure on that. So that's about half the cards right there. The other half is this deck right here. This deck has all the AI cards. Um, actually, this might be the entire AI deck. And then some fighting arts and other things at the back. So these are considered, I don't know what these are, the armor cards, I guess. They sum up armor that you can wear. Uh, the Dung Beetle Knight... You know, strength. So these could be some, yeah, these are fighting arts. Uh, I got some training education cards, some science cards, the resin dung ball itself, motion sickness, burn obsession, attack pattern, block formation. Oh, okay, so these are tactics cards. That's cool. Tactics cards are really cool. They're basically, um, I, I don't understand them fully yet, 
but if I understand them correctly, they give your uh, survivors tactics that they can play and use when fighting, and it'd be my assumption. And then, of course, we got a lot of these are all of the AI cards, so these are definitely in the spoiler territory. That's why I'm not spending much time on them, but just so you can get a rough idea of some of the delicious and wonderful artwork <laughs> that comes in this game. Uh, really cool though. So I can't wait to sleeve these because this is a game that deserves sleeves. Uh, one thing I've noticed with these cards, guys, that I never mentioned before is if you, if you, I would say if you ran your fingernail across these gold cards, you wouldn't notice it as much. But I find these black cards, the way the varnish is on them, if you get a little too aggressive and you scrape with your fingernail, you can actually leave a pretty nasty mark across. So this is one of those games, and, and the thing is, you might think that that means the cards are cheap. They're actually really, really, like they're really, um, high quality feeling. They just have a really delicate finish on them. So uh, this is one of those games that I really recommend that you do sleeve because with the amount, especially with AI cards, with the amount of shuffling you're gonna do prior to uh, sending up the AI, card, AI deck for a showdown, things like that over time, it could really eat your cards up a little bit. Um, so with any game, any board game at all, if you have to shuffle a lot, then it's a good idea to, um, to, to sleeve your cards. And it doesn't have to be the most expensive premium sleeves either. I'm just doing, for me, I typically just go ahead with, uh, I'm using Mayday right now. Um, they're certainly not the best quality in the world and I just get the 100 packs because they're uh, they're good enough. They're they're better than a penny sleeve and they're just, uh, and they're under, you know, the premium sleeves, but they also don't cost a fortune. Um, and they do the job well. So I haven't had any problems with them that way. I used to be really crazy about buying the premium sleeves and now I only do it for certain games because the cost is just astronomical. It just becomes crazy. Um, and you end up paying more for the sleeves than you did for half the game, which is also scary. So, okay, here's a couple of dividers that you're gonna get for your expansion. So the Dung Beetle Night Gear and the Dung Beetle uh, divide. I really like the fact they put the actual artwork on that divider. It's just really nice and smart on their part for doing that. Um, this again, I'm a horrible person. I can't remember exactly what they call these again. They're all part of the crafting system, but it's something that opens up and allows you to craft all these different items. It's called the Wet Resin Crafter. So this is just something that you're able to use and, and craft a bunch of items with. So that's really, really cool. I, uh, I'm actually really looking forward to learning more about these expansions because I know nothing about them because I haven't played with them and I've kept as far away from any spoilers as I possibly can. Uh, we're going to go into the rule book uh, for this particular one, but again, I'm going to avoid all spoilers, so don't worry. Here is the artwork again for the Dung Beetle Knight. Here is the first page. Here's an example of how he looks, and I can tell you right now, people that have painted the Dung Beetle Knight, uh, it's mind-blowing, some of the stuff that people have done with this guy. Uh, looks really, really good. So here's the first page of this. You got the Dung Beetle Knight, kind of tells you everything you should, you know, if you want to do an inventory of stuff, it always does that, which is great. Shows you how to upgrade the core game, uh, the Knight Expansion and Tactics deck, some new things that are coming into the into gameplay. You've got some rules section, you got some gear, the actual Dung Ball itself and how it works likely, because that's going to have to be explained. Uh, looks like there's new mechanics in the combat itself, so it's showing you how that's going to work. That's really cool, and it's obvious because now you're fighting two. You're, you're fighting two things that are moving at once, um, and then of course we go right into spoiler territory of all kinds of artwork and everything else that I'm not going to show you because that is going to ruin everything. So that's how these typically run. They go right into story events and artwork and everything else, and I would love to show you guys that, but uh, for respect of the creator and designer of the game. Uh, I'm just not going to go down that road because this is something that if you want to get into, you have to discover on your own. So with that being said, that covers absolutely everything for the Dung Beetle Knight expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. Hopefully this was useful. Thank you so much for watching, taking the time to do so. Appreciate your support. And as always, guys, keep on rolling solo.